Hi, Tony Shark with you from the Chicago Rocker Newsletter. And today we continue on with our Character of the Scene series. That's when we bring in somebody from outside of the stage world. In other words, they're behind the scenes, they're promoters, they're uh, just doing a service that, that helps our local musicians. And today we've got one of the biggest characters that you'd ever want to meet in our Chicago music scene. I've got Ron Davis here from the Rockstar Mafia. Good to see you, Ron. Good to see you, Tony. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a bunch of different things, not the least of which I hear there's some kind of event coming up here. I guess it's the 25th anniversary of your 25th birthday or something like this. Is, is this is coming up or something? Yeah, we're having it on Saturday, April 23rd at the Old Shark City, which is now Cuba in Glendale Heights. And um, it's going to be big. There's going to be a lot of people there, a lot of friends. It's going to be kind of crazy. Um, the band... Cover Dogs and Friction are both going to be playing. Two of my favorite bands. Yep. Awesome bands. And it's going to be a theme party where a lot of people are going to be dressed as different rock stars. There'll be people dressed like Kiss, Elvis, all different like eras of music. Does that um, mean i got to dress up like Mike DeMont? I'm going to have to get buff and everything. He it's going to be that weird. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> I, I bet he would love that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And so uh, it's just going to be a, a, a big blast like some of your other sh your other uh, parties that you've had, but this might be right. like one and of the they, biggest ones off the hook then, right? Right. The last four years I've had themed birthday parties. Um, I did a 70s party, which went over amazing. Um, I had a Hawaiian party, which was a lot of fun, and my wife, Alana, brought in Hawaiian hula dancers, which I had no idea of, about at all, and they did a show for about 45 minutes. And then last year, the world famous trailer trash party, which you guys were at. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was cr pretty pretty off the hook there. So now, a lot of people thought that I was going to do something really off the wall, like have my, is it called 50th? Or is it 25th anniversary? Okay. Um, my 50th birthday party, yeah. Okay. We're going to call it that. So. A lot of people thought that it was going to be at somewhere like Wrigley Field, and I was going to have bands like Motley Crue, Def Leppard, and Judas Priest like be in like the bands, but it was a little too much. So we decided to just kind of they wouldn't fit in Shark smaller. City. There'd be there'd be you know there'd be that too much the equipment. That would be the problem. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. So, but we're going to make it into a what's, full blast rock and roll event. And what's the date again? April twenty third. It's a Saturday, right? It's a Saturday. And what time does it start? It starts at 7, and it'll go on till about 1 in the morning. It's probably till May, if I yeah. know you. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just never ends, the birthday. So this whole thing started when you started this meetup group, I guess might be a good way to put it, uh, called the Rockstar Mafia. The tell Rockstar me, Mafia. Tell me about that a little bit. It's a, it's a, it's a group that I put together years ago. It's like four years ago now. And it was basically, we were going out with a lot of people and it was a lot more fun to like know people in a group than just going out with like me and a buddy or me and a couple people. It was like, okay, well, the more you group people together, now we're big and now we're known and we have about 350, 400 people that just always kind of get together and go out and, and we never really have an event that there's not at least like 30 to 50 of us that end up going out and just having a good time with each other and people know people well 30 to 50 is is bringing it down a little bit i've been at events where you've had 300 people there at these okay days. but i'm just saying on an average average right. show there's always a good 30 to 50 but no, right we get some big ones and the and the birthday show is going to be huge so that's where you get your 300 and so sometimes you do your big events and sometimes you guys just say, hey, we're going to meet at this, at this place and go see this band play someplace, right? I do my best to try to let people know the fun events that are going on, as we call it, over fun events. It's a oh. little, little bit more than fun. And who are some of the bands that, that you guys support? Well, Friction, obviously, and Cover Dogs are, are great friends. They, they've played a lot of shows with us. Um, uh, Love I've Drive which is a Scorpions band. Um, I think I've seen you guys out at like uh, 
lounge puppets things, right? I love lounge like, puppets, yeah. Yeah, and then you said Trash Can Symphony. Trash Can Symphony. They actually have a song called Rockstar Mafia. They made that song just for our band. How did you just come up with the name? Um, just sitting there thinking, like, we're just, you know, we're a bunch of rock stars and, like, we put it together with, like, you know, like a mafia of people, like, just to kind of sound a little, like, tough. And, and this is a group that cool. you started on Facebook? Uh-huh. And can anybody join in on it? or? Um, we usually like to know who people are from going out, you know, two or three or four times. And just, you know, once they become friends with people, it just kind of becomes like a given that, you know, that, okay, well, let's add them into the group or I'll accept their friend, their request. It just, you know, I don't like to just... It's not just anybody just, just signs up and goes on. You actually, you Correct. sort of want to see them at shows. And yeah, yeah, because then... Then the, the word, the name gets out bad because you don't know who's who, and this way people no, want to know who's in the group. So they kind of left me up to that, to just kind of making the decisions of who and what. And you started this with your wife, Alana. Alana helped me, and Alana is always my partner in crime when it comes to my our music scene. And so you started, you started doing the uh, this group. What what were you doing before that? Were you just did you just go to a lot of shows, or are you a musician, or what's I used what's to your go story? I of the big name bands, and I wasn't as much into the local scene. I started getting into the local scene back in the back in the days with my my, my friend Daryl, that was in a band called Legendary Rockstars. I'd go see them, and he was actually in a band called Ma Machines Gone Mad, and there was the band FNR and the band Uncle Sam. That were like the three bands that I'd go to repetitively. And uh, it just kind of merged into all these newer bands and going out and seeing them. Almost every weekend I go out to see a band. And you actually have too. sort of a f special friendship with uh, Bill from Friction, Yeah, right? Bill Covert. We grew up, we've known each other since we're probably about sixth grade. We went to school together in Pittsburgh. And Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he moved to Chicago. <laughs> we were roommates from the time we were like... You know, 18 to 22 years old before he went out to LA and then eventually came back to Chicago to because he was living in Pittsburgh we saw each other at a reunion again and I was like dude you should come back to Pittsburgh come back to Chicago and let's do it all over again and then we work together we we hang out we're we're best buds and um, you know, when you work together you like a, like in a day gig kind of thing yeah Okay. What do you do? We uh, we we sell Chicago souvenirs. We, uh, we go around store to store and uh, just been doing this type of stuff forever. Very cool. Yeah. So you're a sports geek as much as you are a rock and roll geek. Then. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, well, tell me about some of the other other uh, events that you've done uh, as part of your things. I mean, you mentioned some, but tell me a little bit more about it. like you do a '70s show. What does that entail? I mean, everybody, it makes sense. Everybody dressing up is like '70s. Like, I, I went as Hugh Hefner that year. Okay. I mean, there was there was everything. I mean, there was uh, somebody dressed as I Dream of Genie. Uh, the Kiss characters came out. Uh, Evil Knievel. It, it was great. The '70s party was great. We had an '80s party. The '80s party was fantastic too. Not as big as the '70s, but it was uh, it was cool. And uh, there'll be a lot of that type of stuff here too because it's going to be kind of like a lot of retro dressing up but some people will probably just throw on a con concert t-shirt and, and a wig and just go out and have fun you know kind of fit in or a chicken hat or some people could put on a chicken hat what there's a lot of shows where the chicken hats come out what is with the chicken hat thing what 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 is what is that about this we used to go to shows it started with big crazy glasses and cat in the hat hats and little by little I had like two suitcases filled with party hats. I'd be bringing them out to shows, letting a bunch of people just wear them, have fun, you know. It like turns the going out to see a band into just a big old party. Everybody has a hat on. Every hat, Everybody has some photos to take. Funny photos. Let's take a selfie with a funny hat on. And it was just multiple hats all the time. And then little by little, I kind of fell for this chicken hat. I got the most attention from the chicken hat. And I'm like, 
I gotta, I gotta have this. So I buy the chicken hat. Then everybody wants a picture with the chicken, me and the chicken hat. Then they want to wear the chicken hat. So I bought a second chicken hat. Then it started to get like, let's get group pictures with the chicken hat. So then I had four chicken hats. I'm gonna put the chicken hat on. In case you never saw me with the chicken hat on, now you, now you have. So eventually, I was like, well, we probably need to have more chicken hats because there's a lot more people that are going to the shows. So, how many chicken hats do I have now? Now people don't... Now I have 20 chicken hats. People don't normally envision me with a chicken hat on, but I have worn this thing at you the have, shows. We have a picture with you and the chicken hat on. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's sort of, I guess, guess since it's been documented before, I guess I, I can try doing a chicken hat here and, okay, this this will be... This will be interesting. Now we're chickens. Now, yeah, here we go. Do you, uh, know who, do you know who the most famous person is that has had a chicken hat on? Who? Sebastian Bach. Really? From Skid Row. Yep. He loved it. He like he grabbed it on stage and he wore it around while he was playing. There's been a lot. Almost every almost every band in Chicago that I've been to see, somebody in the band or the whole band has worn the chicken hat. At some point or other, you do wash these things, right? I wash. Oh, okay. Them. Yeah, All right, I good. do. Okay. <laughs> I do. All twenty of them. They go in. They 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 swim. They get clean. They they love it in the. They love it taking bath. Funny thing is, I am good friends with uh, Christine Perry, Rock Christine, the Rock Princess Christine, and she's who's actually introduced us to your group. Uh -huh. And uh, we've actually gone to at the beginning went to shows. We didn't even know you your wife or anybody that we would just we just showed up at the, at the shows and you know found it to be just such a a, a fun atmosphere christine's like me she likes <clears> to get people together likes to have big groups of friends and just turn everything into a party so the first time i actually met you you were walking by in your chicken hat i'm looking at you like you're from outer space and you turned around you grabbed me and did a selfie with you me and you and your chicken hat that's how we met mm -hmm. and it, it just it's it's funny that i hear this from from different uh people in your group about how how that's exactly how they sort of got involved in things didn't they have that in rolling stone magazine they yeah that's a, that's what it was yeah that's what it was okay. um but uh it's a cool picture so when you do these things like you do a Christmas thing, uh, uh, pretty much. Uh, you've done it. You've done a cr we these did Christmas. The, we what? did Winter Rana Palooza. It's we've had it for three years now, and everybody dresses up in holiday attire. Um, I did Santa Claus several years until this year when I changed and did Frosty the Snowman. But okay, we like doing the dress up things. It makes things different. It makes things fun. It makes for great pictures, and it makes things just. A little out there. Well, how did the, how did other people how did this Christmas theme start? You you went to you were part of something else. I or? used to go to a thing in the city called SantaCon, where everybody would dress up. There'd be like 300 people dressed up as Santa Claus, and there would be all kinds of different holiday costumes. Pretty much the same thing as what we do, but without music. And there was a guy that took over running it and it was a free event for years and years and all of a sudden decided that he's gonna like change this and turn it into a, a money-making event and the year before I brought a hundred of my friends down there and we all had a blast and when he changed it to like a money-making thing I said you know what I'm gonna do something of my own I said I don't need to bring everybody down for this I'll bring some everybody else to something that I'm gonna set up and bring rock and roll bands and connect it up and have two or three bands and have everybody dress up and Winter Rana Palooza's went over great the last few years and it'll continue. Well that's one of the interesting things about you and your group from what I understand <coughs> excuse me um, you don't necessarily monetize this you don't you don't really you, you're you're promoting but you're not playing promoters is, is that correct? Yeah, it's all just about fun. It's all about bringing people together. It's not a money thing. It's all just liking to organize things. Alana, my wife, and I just like to be... take. Somebody's got to take charge, so we do it. 
and it just people trust us that it's going to be fun if we say it's going to be fun people know it's going to be a fun event if we say over fun they know to be ready and stay out late because it's going to be even even better than just a fun event and what's once again the date of this birthday party coming up april 23rd on a saturday at cuba the old shark city in glendale heights i've been a rocker my whole life a metalhead always i i grew up with it i grew up with the, the Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and all that stuff through high school and I, um, I, I love it. I still love it. I love European music, metal, like Ed Guy and Stradivarius and I like, I'm all around the board, but I even like Elton John and regular rock, but all I like is rock and roll. Mm -hmm. rocker. I'm a rocker. I'll always be a rocker. I really like, that's one of my problems. I don't really get into other music. I'll, uh, I'll never get into rap. I'll never get into other stuff. It's just, you know. Did you ever play? Never. Don't know how to play anything, except I do know how to turn my stereo up really loud. I wish I did. Billy tried to teach me how to play bass when I was 16, but it didn't go over too well. I remember we were trying to play an Aussie song. I think it was Believer. and. I just, I don't have the fingers for bass. I don't know, I don't have the mind for music, but I have the mind for listening to music. Sometimes the bands let me get up and sing with them. And uh, that's all just about some fun. And uh, it's all a good time. I there love you it. go. Yeah. Now you've got something planned in June too, right? Oh yeah, the Rockstar Mafia Fest, part three. It's gonna be at the Broken Ore. And that is on June 18th. And it's another Saturday. And that's a whole day festival. It's, it, it's went over great. Um, this is the third year that, uh, that Bonnie, that owns the Broken Ore, has let us have it there. And uh, we, we've uh, made our own t-shirts for it. She's, she's helped out with that. She's made koozies up for us. Um, it's going to be phenomenal this year. We have uh, four bands that are going to play. Uh, Love Drive's going to be there. Trash Can Symphony's going to be playing. Cover Dogs and Judas Beast will be the, the evening band. And yeah. can't wait for this one. You know, every morning when I either get up or I'm going to sleep, if you know me at all, I look at I look at my my phone and I get this this alert that some guy named Alan has posted in the Rockstar Mafia. He does it every morning, and it either tells me to get up or to go to bed. He doesn't to, miss on the weekends either. You're right. What What's his name? Alan Hannaful. And he's the drummer from. They were VVX, but now they're called My Metal Heart. And he just, he puts up like birthdays of rock stars and different things. and Every day, and make sure he, every, all the rock star birthday party, birthday uh, people, like their, their dates are up there. I really find that very interesting and, and, and I hear from my other friends and we, we always laugh about it. Oh yeah. That, that, that that's, it's, our, it's our signal that the day has started. So have you met a lot of people that you didn't know through oh, doing yeah. this? Every time I go out, I meet people. Every time I go out, I have... 10, 15 new Facebook friend requests and, you know, oh, I've seen you before, uh, you know, you know, little by little I get to know people, I mean, just always, I didn't know this. Kind of when you first started doing it, was it harder to, like, get dates for events than it is now? I mean, you, you've been, you've been successful in a way that I have seen nobody else in this entire thing sort of do. You've got a, you've got a very unique kind of group in that bands have followings, but there aren't a lot of groups that are just their own entity that can decide to, that they're going to go and, and help promote a show or help you know be there or, or support a local a local band. Uh -huh. You know, to to the point where I've I've seen your group come out and sort of build a band. I mean, I think Cover Dogs is is a good example of it. They've always been great. They've always had a good following, but once you latched onto them, all of a sudden we they started getting the more and more popular, and the oh, name yeah. the name became thing. I mean, how do you feel, you know, when somebody tells you that, or, or the, the musicians tell you that, you know, you really help them, you know? Well, we love being a help. I mean, that's that's part of like, you know, makes it makes you feel good in your heart. You really like, you know, you're really helping out the Chicago rock and roll scene. I mean, that's just. You know, because I'm not a musician, 
I like to do something. So this is what I do. This is what I'm good at. I'm good at meeting people. I'm good at socializing. I'm good at taking pictures, taking videos, getting people to know other people. I mean, we've had so many events that we've had over the years where, where great friendships have become just through us. And sometimes I think some of the people forget that they even met each other through us, but right. they all seem to originate through me and Lana and I. <laughs> I've been, at, I've been at, at shows where you walk in and all of a sudden everybody lights up and that, that okay, Ron, Ron's here and Alana's I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, and I have my chicken hat with me. <laughs> and it, 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 it's just like, oh, it's like, okay, party on. It, that's sort of, you know. Oh, yeah. It's like party on, Garth. <laughs> you know? Party on, Wayne. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I, that's kind of what it used to be like with the with the bags, with the suitcases, I was saying, with the party hats. And some people like want that to come back. Like, you know, why does it always have to be the chickens? It just became the chickens. But we're going to probably have an, a party in the future, in the near future, in my brain, with all the party hats again. I think that will go over great. I think a lot of people are looking for one of those nights where I just bring, like, the bags and bring all the hats. So, all right, I want you to close your eyes right now. We're thinking about the 55th party, and what is it going to be the ultimate Ron party? If you could put the ultimate party together, what would it, who would be on stage and what would it be? Locally or? No, just in general. You're, you're, picking, you're picking the cream of the crop. <laughs> what, what, who do you think would be on stage? I would love to have Judas Priest, Queensryche, and... That blubber at all player show just for me. Well, that way, that way. give it five years, maybe there'll be at a point where we can get them at, uh, in a club and <laughs> do that in Wrigley Field. <laughs> yeah, there we, you go. Yeah, well, that's what we thought about, but I, I don't think Wrigley Field is ready for me. Yet. Well, I don't think there's a lot of places that are ready for you, but uh, anyhow, so it's Saturday, April 23rd, Saturday, April 23rd at Q Bar Glendale Heights, and I'm looking forward to everybody showing up for this one because this is going to be great. Yeah, well, you know, I just want to tell you personally, I think what you do is amazing. Thank it just it's it's so it. unique and so different. Uh, I've had friends from other cities that I deal with in clubs and things like that ask me about your group really? and and how it's actually started and th that kind of thing. So, you know, your your message is is going past Chicago uh -huh. and it's uh, turned into uh, something that's really that's really unique. So, Thank you very much from the musicians, from me, and from everybody else. And this was Ron Davis, Rockstar Mafia. And uh, if you see this guy in a chicken hat, uh, you know, be careful. He can get a little crazy. Come up and say hello. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, bud. Thank you.